Welcome back to my channel. This week is another makeup tutorial, which features green, as you can see. I used this light green color on the lids, which is vibrant without being pastel, and paired it with a bronze skin and a nude lip so that there's no pink or anything to contract. This look is all about the eyes. This tutorial is also a prime example of why not to judge makeup, specifically eyeshadow, until the rest of the face and the mascara is done. Stay tuned to the end to see what that all looks like. If you're interested in seeing how I got this look on my face, keep on watching. So I'm gonna start by mixing two different foundations as my base. One is the Wet n Wild Photo Finish and the other one is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion. The Flower Beauty is really, really glowy and I wanna tone it down while adding a bit of coverage. I am gonna be a little bit more picky about concealing my spots today for the look that I'm going for, but I'm not looking to really cancel anything out here. I'm just trying to create an even base. Next, I'm gonna prime my eyes just because I know if I don't do it now, I will forget to do it and already have the eyeshadow on later. Before that foundation has a chance to set down, I want to go ahead and apply my liquid highlight now so it can really become one with the skin and they can all uh, mix and, and settle together. This is one of the things I really love about liquid highlights is you can apply them when your foundation is not set yet and it will really let the two mix so it doesn't look like a stripe of highlight on your skin. I don't have a green palette, but I do have green shadows and random palettes that I have laying here, and I may dip and dab. I will link and try to tell you when I'm using each one. I'm gonna start out with this green here from the Wet n Wild Iconic palette. I'm gonna go in with a slightly more dense flat brush so that I can pack this color onto my lid. The color's coming off really muted compared to what it looks like in the palette. It's not quite packing a punch. It, it, it's a gorgeous color, but I want something that's really vibrant. So I'm gonna dip into my Sleek palette and use the more limey sage green in there. See how much more vibrant that color is? Now the color comes all the way up almost to touch the brow here at the front, and then it tapers off. This is much higher than I would typically take a, a color, but it's what makes this look really open the eye. And then it's not quite as high out here. I will go in with a, a fluffy brush in a moment to blend any edges. This is bright and definitely not natural looking makeup, but that doesn't mean that it has to be hard edges. Now I'm struggling a bit to figure out where to shape this color, so I'm gonna go in and do my brows. Now I'm gonna go into a color that's a little bit blue-green to try to add some dimension just on the lid. I'm putting this color mostly on the outer half of the eye and not taking it up into the crease. If when you're doing your makeup you press the brush like this and wiggle it rather than trying to do a lot of swiping when you're putting the color on, you'll have less fallout. I really want the densest color just right there. Switch to my smaller mirror so I can really get out close and personal with this. Now going back to that other green from the other Sleek palette, I'm gonna take it on the tip of that brush and pack it onto the lower lash line because we really want the color to completely encompass and blow out this eye. This isn't about having everything defined into sections with line or anything, this is about just color just enveloping the eye. I'm bringing that color all the way into, sorry I'm like hunched over here, <laughs> bringing that color all the way into the inner corner. What a difference that makes having the color all the way versus just on top. It just balances a little bit better. Next I have this color Sage, which is a single and I just want to pack this on the entire thing to kind of tone down the blue that we've used, that blue-green, and just make everything look really fresh and minty again. Something else I really like about this look is that they put a pop of blue in the lower waterline just to create some dimension. You don't really see the blue, but it makes the green pop even more. This would be an ideal time to use um, a liner of this color, but I don't have one, and this is a good way to work with what you have. 
I'm just going in and removing. We may have gotten a little bit happy with our blending up into that brow area. I want the highest part of the green to be here at the, the front of the eye and let it slope down. Before I put mascara on and commit to this eye look, I'm gonna finish the face and decide if I need to tweak anything else in the eyeshadow. I start by putting some concealer here under my eyes. With such a strong eye look, it's gonna be really important to lift any shadows that are underneath the eye. Next, to go and finish off the face, because I still have bit of, quite a bit of acne poking through. Most of it's not active, but my face isn't loving me right now. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that Wet n Wild foundation on the back of my hand, mixing in a little bit of that flower foundation. And I'm gonna use that as a concealer with this little brush, just on those areas when I need more coverage. Sometimes you don't need a completely new product to conceal. You can just go in with a smaller brush with that same foundation and really buff it and work it into those areas where you just want a little bit more coverage. Better that than slathering on the coverage everywhere because I don't need a whole lot here in the center of my face. It's mostly the perimeter that I need a little bit more help. And you can't see my hand here, but I'm really working the product into the brush. So I'm not adding that much product to my face. The final trick to concealing acne is to make sure you powder those areas well, because if there's any shine on them and there's still quite a bit of shine in my face, uh, it will reflect more light and make that texture even more evident. So I'm gonna go in and powder, especially where we've added that additional coverage. So that's the difference. This side has a light layer of powder, but especially where I've gone in and done that detail work, and this side has no powder. It just makes it look a little bit more airbrushed and fine, and you don't have to use a lot of powder for this. Now, it may have looked like we just put powder over all that liquid highlight we applied, but it did make a difference, and that liquid highlight is making those areas look more luminous. Now I'm not very tan if you can't tell, and I don't wanna put on so much bronzer that my face looks like it's a different color. So I'm gonna use a technique where I use a lighter shade that's a little bit cooler of a bronzer to do the preliminary bronzing and then go in with something that's a little bit more of that traditional bronze tone to sculpt, and it'll keep me from looking too orange. So going in and placing this color with a big brush, really diffused application. This is another reason I'm glad I didn't do my mascara yet because it would be catching all of this powder. I've been using this bronzer for over a year and I'm just now starting to hit pan and it's my, uh, my everyday bronzer so it's, it's holding out pretty well for me. One thing I really like about it is you can add and add and add and add and it's very difficult to overdo. Um, that's something I like in face products. I don't want them to be pigmented all the way right away. I don't wanna to add too many colors with a bronzer and then a blush with this green. So I'm gonna bring this bronzer a little bit further down on my cheek than I would typically. Now with a slightly smaller brush, I'm gonna go in with a little bit warmer of a bronzer. And I'm gonna be really careful. I'm not gonna dip in a whole lot and I'm really gonna take the excess off on the back of my hand and go in and just place it at the deepest parts of where I want that color to be. Clicking upward rather than downward uh, to keep you from looking like you have a sideburn. <laughs> and I am going to bring this with whatever's left on the brush up into this, this temple area because that's where I would naturally get sun anyway. See the difference how this one's got just that extra level of, of color and this one's just the, the single bronzer, which is totally fine. Like on an everyday look, I don't do this. But this is a tutorial and this is fun and this is very much an event look. Again, I'm working on really light lighters. Like I'm, I'm barely touching just a couple brushes there before going in and adding because I don't want to go in and add too much. Like I'm going tap, tap and then going in. It's a little bit more time consuming, but it's more user friendly and it does make for a better effect. It's the same premise when you paint your nails. You don't paint them with one thick coat all at once. You go in and you do two or three lighter, thinner coats. Finally, I'm gonna go in with a highlight just to set and, and make everything look a little bit more poppin'. If we're going there with the green, we can go there with the highlight. I'm not putting this on top of my cheekbone like I would normally. 
I'm placing it at the front of my cheek. One thing I really like about this highlight specifically is it doesn't show up as pigment on the skin. Um, the light has to catch it just the right way and then it just beams. Uh, otherwise, if the light's not hitting it, it's more translucent. Now it's time for some mascara. Now after seeing that mascara on, I'm loving this, but I wanna go back in with that blue on the lower lash line. It's faded a little bit and that's normal, but if you go back and you reapply after it's had a chance to set and maybe migrate around a little bit, it will help it be more vibrant and be more long wearing. Now to finish off this look, I don't wanna go in with anything pink for the same reason I didn't put on any blush, but I do wanna define my lips a little bit. So I'm gonna go in with this nude lip liner. I wanna line the outer edges of my lips, not so much the, the middle section. So it has dimension, but it doesn't look like liner. Feathering that color onto the lip a little bit as well. Then topping it off with a little bit of lip balm. And that's the finished look. Thanks for watching, and until next week, keep revealing and refining your beauty which sometimes can include a pop of color. See you next week.